Ion engines may seem to come straight out of science fiction, but believe me, they are real. With their super high efficiencies and long burn durations, they may seem like they are the future of a space exploration. Join me as we discover why they are extremely efficient and why we don't see them all the time. To start, let's talk about what an ion is. An ion is an atom or a molecule that has gained or lost one or more electrons, giving it an electrical charge. Ion thrusters use this property of ions to generate thrust. Ion thrusters work by accelerating ions using an electrical field. The thruster has a small chamber, called an ionization chamber, filled with a gas such as xenon. An electron gun, which is a device that emits a stream of electrons, is used to create plasma in the chamber. Plasma is a gas that has been ionized. This means that it contains a high concentration of ions and electrons. The next step is to accelerate the ions out of the thruster. This is done using an electric field. The thruster has a set of electrodes that create a potential difference, or voltage, between them. The ions are accelerated by this electric field and are expelled out the back of the thruster, creating thrust. One of the key advantages of ion thrusters is their high specific impulse, which is a measure of how efficiently a rocket uses its propellant. Traditional chemical rockets have a specific impulse of around 450 seconds for on the higher side, while an ion thruster has a specific impulse of up to 3,000 seconds. This means that ion thrusters can generate more thrust per unit of propellant than chemical rockets, making them more efficient and allowing spacecraft to travel further and faster. Another advantage of ion thrusters is their longevity. Chemical rockets burn through their fuel quickly, meaning they can only provide short bursts of thrust. Ion thrusters, on the other hand, can operate continuously for months or even years. This makes them ideal for long-duration missions such as deep space exploration. However, ion thrusters aren't without their limitations. One major limitation is their low thrust-to-weight ratio, which suggests that they can only provide a small amount of thrust compared to their weight. This makes them unsuitable for launching spacecraft from Earth's surface where the high thrust is needed to overcome the planet's gravity. Another limitation is their low maximum thrust. This implies that they cannot accelerate the spacecraft quickly. This limits their use for missions that require high acceleration, such as human spaceflight. Despite these limitations, ion thrusters are an influential technology for space exploration and they are likely to play a key role in future missions. They are a prime example of how science and technology can work together to overcome the challenges of space travel and unlock the mysteries of the universe. Additionally, another potential application for ion thrusters is satellite technology. Many satellites require regular adjustments to their orbits and ion thrusters can provide a highly efficient and precise means of doing so. This can extend the lifespan of satellites and reduce the amount of fuel they require, making them more cost-effective. Furthermore, advancements in ion thruster technology are ongoing and researchers are working to improve their thrust to weight ratio and maximum thrust. For example, NASA's Evolutionary Xenon Thruster Dash Commercial Next C ion thruster has a higher thrust to weight ratio than previous models, making it more suitable for use in deep space missions. But ion engines aren't the only super high efficiency engines available. Hall effect thrusters are a type of electrical propulsion system that generates thrust by accelerating ions. They were first developed in the 1960s for space exploration and have since been used on a variety of spacecraft including communication satellites, deep space probes, and even Soviet spaceships. To understand how Hall effect thrusters work, we must look at the Hall effect a fundamental phenomenon in physics. The Hall effect occurs when a magnetic field, generally from a static magnet, is then applied perpendicular to a conductor, such as copper, while it's carrying a current. It causes the electrons of the conductor to move to one side, which creates a voltage difference perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field. This voltage difference is called the Hall voltage. 
In a hollow type of thruster, a gas, usually xenon, is injected into a hollow chamber called the discharge channel. At one end of the chamber, there is a cathode that generates a cloud of electrons, which are then accelerated toward an anode at the other end. The magnetic field required to induce the Hall effect is generated by a set of coils surrounding the discharge channel. As the electrons move through the magnetic field, they experience the Hall effect, which causes them to move to one side of the discharge channel. This creates a voltage difference that accelerates ions in the xenon gas toward the anode. The ions collide with neutral xenon atoms, which causes them to become ionized and create more ions. This process is called ionization and creates a plasma. The plasma then extends out of the discharge channel and creates a jet of ions that generate thrust. This thrust is very small but can be sustained for long periods, which makes hollow effect thrusters ideal for deep space missions where small amount of thrust can go a long way. It is also worth noting that hollow effect thrusters can be controlled extremely precisely, allowing for extremely accurate maneuvers in space. One of the most crazy things about the hollow effect thrusters is their mind-blowing efficiency. They can generate thrust with an efficiency of up to 90%, which is crazy high compared to chemical rockets. They get around 30 or so percent efficiency. This means that Hall effect thrusters can provide the same amount of thrust using way less propellant, which is a huge advantage for long duration missions. Hall effect thrusters have been used to keep satellites in orbit for extended periods, reducing their costly refueling missions. Another crazy aspect of Hall effect thrusters is their very high velocities. They can accelerate fuel out the back of the spacecraft at around 90,000 meters per second, or 90 kilometers per second, which is almost 10 times faster than chemical rockets. This makes them much better for missions that require high speed, such as deep space explorations or interstellar travel. For example, the Deep Space One mission used a Hall effect thruster to reach speeds of over 16,000 miles per hour, or 26,000 kilometers per hour. Hall effect thrusters are also incredibly reliable. Seeing as they have no moving parts, they, it means that they are less prone to failure than other types of propulsion systems. This is particularly important for long duration missions where equipment failure can have serious consequences. They've been used on a variety of missions, including the Dawn spacecraft, which used the Hall effect thruster to travel to the asteroid belt and explore two separate asteroids. Another potential application is asteroid mining. Here, Hall effect thrusters could transport mined resources back to Earth or other destinations in space for considerably less fuel and cost. This could completely revolutionize the mining industry, providing access to cheaper materials and also provide a new source of valuable resources for humanity. These engines are fascinating, but there's a more promising type of high efficiency thruster. The magnetoplasmodynamic thruster, which is a type of ion drive. A very long name for a very efficient engine. These engines are so rebellious, they feel like they came straight out of science fiction. MPD thrusters work by first ionizing a gas, typically a noble gas such as argon or xenon, and then using magnetic fields to accelerate the resulting plasma. This acceleration creates a powerful and efficient thrust that can propel spacecraft at very high speeds. MPD thrusters are currently the most efficient form of electric propulsion with specific va impulse values that are several times higher than those of other electrical thrusters, such as ion thrusters. So how can MPD thrusters revolutionize space travel? Well, one of the main advantages of these thrusters is their high efficiency, which means they can produce a bigger amount of thrust using a relatively little amount of propellant. This is important because the amount of fuel that a spacecraft can carry is limited by the size and weight of the rocket needed to launch it. By using a more efficient propulsion system like an MPD thrusters, spacecraft can travel further and faster using less propellant, which can greatly reduce the cost and complexity of space missions. 
Another advantage of MPD thrusters is their high thrust to weight ratio, which means that they can produce a considerable amount of thrust relative to their weight. This is important because the amount of thrust that a spacecraft can produce determines how quickly it can accelerate and how quickly it can reach its destination. Using a propulsion system with a high thrust to weight ratio, spacecraft can accelerate more quickly and reach their destinations in less time. Now let's talk about the potential of MPD thrusters for interplanetary travel. Currently it requires several months of travel from Earth to Mars using chemical rockets, which are the primary propulsion system used for spacecraft today. However, with MPD thrusters, it may be possible to reduce this time to just 39 days. This is based on a proposed mission called the Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket, or VASMIR, which is a type of MPD thruster that has been under development for several years now. The VASMIR thruster works by ionizing one or more gases and then accelerating them using magnetic fields. However, unlike traditional MPD thrusters, the VASMIR thruster can vary its specific impulse, which is a measure of the amount of thrust that it can produce per unit of propellant. By varying the specific impulse, the VASMIR thruster can optimize its performance for different phases of a mission. For example, it can use a high specific impulse to accelerate quickly and then switch to a lower specific impulse for sustained thrust during the cruise phase of a mission. The VASMIR thruster has been proposed for several potential interplanetary missions, including a crewed mission to Mars which would just take 39 days. This would be a significant improvement over the current travel time of several months using chemical rockets. However, several challenges still need to be overcome before this mission can become a reality. One of the biggest challenges is developing a power source that can provide the energy needed to run the VASMIR thruster. Currently, the VASMIR thruster requires a lot of power to operate, and conventional power sources like solar panels or batteries are not just powerful enough. To address this issue, the VASMIR team has been exploring the use of nuclear power, such as a small nuclear reactor, to provide the necessary energy. Another challenge is the development of materials that can withstand the high temperatures and pressures generated by the VASMIR thruster. The plasma in the thruster can reach temperatures of several million degrees Celsius, which can cause materials to melt or break down over time. To address this issue, the VASMIR team has been developing new materials which can withstand these extreme conditions. In addition to these technical challenges, there are also logistical and financial challenges that need to be addressed. The development and testing of new propulsion systems can be expensive and time-consuming, and there is always the risk that a technology may not work as expected. Furthermore, the use of nuclear power for space missions is a controversial issue, and there are concerns about the safety and environmental impact of using nuclear reactors in space. Despite these challenges, many experts believe that MPD thrusters, including the VASMIR thruster, have the potential to revolutionize space travel and enable new types of missions that were previously impossible. By reducing the travel time to Mars from several months to just 39 days, for example, MPD thrusters could open up new possibilities for crewed missions to Mars and other destinations in our solar system. One of the biggest challenges, as discussed earlier, is that they require extremely hot temperatures. And a temperature-related problem is that the sun's atmosphere is hotter than its surface temperature. To learn why it's hotter and more, you need to click on the upper right right now.